So welcome all. Good welcome good. all to our podcast. Fucked up. You know you fucked up, right? Go ahead. <laughs> welcome to our, our podcast. I am Steve. I am Starsky. Me and Starsky go back about twenty years or so, and uh, we Can always, you believe it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. Um, we always had amazing conversations about different things in life, different experiences, people that we know, and you know we're both in the entertainment industry. Um, I have a finance background, so I have an analytical side to the way I think about things. Mm-hmm. He's a more of a critical thinker, so we always have interesting conversations. And we always said, "Dude, we should do a podcast." Right. I mean, we had the means to do it, so we decided let's give it a shot. You know. So today's um, subject we're going to talk about is uh, I love talking about relationships. I'm fascinated about them. I like talking about relations with my uh, about with your girl, your wife, your religion, your friends, your and parents. the honest on everything. Mm-hmm. And the relationships that interest me interest me the most are the male and female dynamic in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Sorry, and all, and I always have these amazing conversations. And we're going to talk about league, like is she in your league or he's in your league, right. and deserve. Well, she should have more, or he deserves this, or I, I deserve, deserve that. Kind of yeah. I, so that's what this conversation is about. Yeah. You know, because this is not a PC podcast. Right. You know, so if you have thin skin, yeah, maybe you need to not watch this. Because it can get a little <laughs> you get a little sketchy sometimes. So all right. Let's so, get into it. We want to talk about league. League. So so League. Can you expound on the idea of league? Okay. So the idea of league, say like we go to high school. Okay. Right? I mean? If you're the geeky dude. The cheerleader is really not in your league. Got it. Right. But now, let's go to adult life. If you're Mark Zuckerberg, mm-hmm. a, a, a colossal of cheerleaders are in your league. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't it interesting how the dynamic of one time in your life to the other yeah. makes a difference? Right. So now we have to ask, does league exist? Is it something that we put it in our own brains to limit our potentials? Yeah, league exists in the same way that um, I mean, league is just another form of classism. Like it's yes, it's a way that people uh, create a feeling of importance. Yeah, that's all. You know what I mean? So, and and league, like when we hear about league as it pertains to relationships, it's never about the relationship. It's about the presentation. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you look at these two people in a photo, if you look at it on paper, if you look, you know what I mean? The pre- is the presentation balanced? Yes. Not are these two people good for each other and good to each other and do they build each other up and do they, you know what I mean? They cover right. each, over each other's flaws and whatnot. It's just, do they look right? It's a cannoli shell. We're it's, not talking about the, fin- the filling. Exactly. About, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Go it's ahead. so Italian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. But I think it's, I mean, it's, it's stupid, for one, yeah. um, in, in terms of relationships. And I think it's, it's flawed, I'll say. Number one, relationships are never the same throughout the relationship. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're moving pieces. They're moving living evolving. things. They're yeah. evolving, right? Yeah. So if we just look at something on paper as, you know, does it make sense? Does it look right? That's not, it's like looking at a... a it's like judging a tree. You, you, you can tell how old the tree is by the rings. You have to yeah. cut into the inside of it to see how, how what it is. Yes. You can see how big it is. You can yeah. see how you know I mean, how many branches it is, how green the leaves are. But you can't tell how old it is. Right. Unless you cut inside it. Right. So the idea of leagues is a very superficial thing. It's a very surface thing. But but that's the thing too that I realize our society is. On the on, on, on the level of on, on on the surface of it, a very superficial society. Yes, everything is super, superficial. Yes. But we never question it. We just go with it because it creates our importance, our sense of importance. We don't question what makes us feel good. It's yes. We only question the things that don't make us feel good. Yes. You know what I'm saying? In spite of it's good or bad for you, we don't. Right. Yeah, if, if, if we're in the moment, we're in the now. We're yeah. In the, yeah. Yeah. True. True. You know, um, it's really interesting because um, I got a good friend of mine. I, you know, I have a, 
a lot of female friends, cousins mm-hmm. that I always talk to. I always have these great conversations with these females. It's really interesting how the male, the, the, the male mind works as opposed to the female mind. Mm-hmm. You know, and so really interesting. I had a good friend of mine, good dude, really good dude. And I have another female friend of mine who's he just got a thing for. Good looking mm-hmm. girl, whatever. And, you know, she was always single. And he said, well, she needs him. <laughs> if he had me, she'd be, <laughs> she'd be good. Right. I'm looking at this dude, I'm like, if you had her, you'd be miserable. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> what you going to bring to her is not stronger than what she has. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, but, but it's amazing what we think that how, it's amazing how people view us and how we view ourselves. That's amazing. Yeah. And sometimes people view you more than what you view yourself. Mm-hmm. And in certain cases, you view yourself more than what other people see you as. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, yeah, I'm, I think it goes back to what you were saying as far as like as a society in general, we are very superficial. We look at ourselves, we look at ourselves and each other through highlight reels, good or bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's either, we don't view the blooper reel. We only view the highlight reel. We view yeah. the teaser, the trailer. We don't yeah. view the blooper reel. We don't view how many times something got messed up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, when you look at social media, like most people feel the need to present their lives on social media. Because you know people are watching. Yeah, but the side A of life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or if it's a, if, if it's a, if, if it's a downside of life, you're putting it out there to get sympathy. Right. Somebody passed away. Oh, yeah. sorry to hear. Oh, you know? It's, it's, it's control. Like, I mean, you know, we talk about this a lot. It's just about power. Like, you, you, there's an there's exercise of power in that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I know people are watching. I know what response I'm going to invoke if I do this thing, if I press this button, if I play this card. But the reality is most people out there that's clicking and apply, they don't really care. But they, they put it out there. Not. They put it out there because they want the same thing when it's their time. And they put... And... It's just... You know, you, we were on Facebook. You post that, you know, your best friend from kindergarten passed away. Mm. I see that. If I know I'm going to see you in person, I'm going to click like on that or express some of my sympathy in some way. Because once I see you, I want to have checked off the box that I addressed this thing in your life. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, like you said, like, yeah, people don't really care. It's all um, presentation. It's yes. all a show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, sorry, so to get back to the conversation of League, like, I think it's really interesting how, you know, people change and relationships change. Like, people leave off or relationships leave off. Mark Zuckerberg is probably no smarter than he was when he went to college. Right. He may have access to more information. He may have had more experiences. Yeah. He might not be any smarter though. Like, like his brain power might not have increased in at all. Right. Possibly. Right. You mean at the like the cellular level? Like, at the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. But like he's got more information to process. Yes. But his, you know what I'm saying? Like the hard drive is the hard drive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But Mark Zuckerberg's, as far as like lead, you know, like what Mark Zuckerberg represents today, mm-hmm. includes billions of dollars yes. and access yes. and resources. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like so the same girl who was in his league for the person that he was is no longer as far as you know how society views things, no longer in his league. Absolutely. And he didn't change. Yes. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's like it's retarded. <laughs> yeah. It's like groupies. Yeah. Male or female. Yeah. Like people will chase the thing that, that is the picture of something. Yeah. People don't chase the star athlete because of how good of a basketball player he is. Okay. Because you can find just as good a basketball player on the playground. Yes, absolutely. He represents something that is not about skill. Whether you're a musician, whether whatever you are, the representation is what matters to our superficial vapid society yeah you know what i mean like people didn't love prince because of how good of a musician he was he happened to be a genius musician right but they were he represented something in terms of his style in terms of his uh the type of music he made like 
You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's really interesting. Like, you know, we're kind of going off at something, but I'm going to hit it anyway. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting how society could deem a certain way as being like it's off putting. But if a certain personality comes in and do it, it's cool. It's accepted. Yeah. It's absolutely accepted. You know, yeah. like, like, like if, if Prince, me, rest in peace, <laughs> you know, like just was a regular dude, right. you know, dressed in purple with the hair and the everything, mm -hmm. we're like, yo, yo, what's up with that? Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but because he was Prince and you, know, they, you saw the results of this, this genius mm -hmm. or now we see this genius, but before you wouldn't see this genius. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? It's really amazing how you view like um, genius and probably something that is a little off. Yeah. It's just about the results. Right. You know what I mean? Because you have, I know a lot of people are a little off, but if they start getting results, you're like, yo, that dude's a genius. Right. But if there's no results, is he still a genius or is he is he just misrepresented? Is he, is he misunderstood? Is he, yeah. any misses we could put onto that, into a word? I mean, right, right, right. You know, but um, as life go on, mm -hmm. the leagues, like how you classify leagues change. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. As life goes on, like when you have nothing to offer as, a, as like a high school kid, mm -hmm. you maybe just your good looks or your athletic ability, like mm -hmm. being a popular big guy on campus right. or whatever. But as you go on to the real world, like I, I tell my nieces, you know, like high school is nonsense. Your life really starts after that. Like your experience in college and beyond that. That's when real life starts. Like you don't realize how much of a mm -hmm. kid you are mm -hmm. in high school when you're in high school. Of course. You know, when you're like an upperclassman, you think you're, you're an adult. But you're yeah. not, <laughs> yeah. yeah, at all, right. you know. But 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 when you're in it, you know, I'm a senior now. You know, your chest is broader. You know, I'm, yeah, you know. well, like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. The upper you know, I remember, yo, man, I was talking to this dude. He was like eighty some years old. We was talking about life. He looked at me and said, "Man, you didn't even start living life yet." Right. What? <laughs> Right. If I start at this point, bro. I've been doing such and such all my life. Like, it's 17. <laughs> it's crazy how what we believe we deserve. Right. Um, and I think it's also like a highlight reel thing. Like, we, we don't factor in the blooper reel. Yes. In what we deserve. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Whether it's like on your job, in your relationship, like wherever the dynamic is, we only ever factor in the good contributions we've made. And right. however sparse they were, like we play those things up. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. the, it's like the, what, what makes it to the highlight reel could have been the play that happened only one time. Right. LeBron James is going to make it on the highlight reel, whether the Cavaliers win or lose. <laughs> the team lost, he dunked, he still makes it on the highlight reel. Yes. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So when we <laughs> yeah. think about like what we deserve as people, like we think about our highlight reels. We don't think about, like, we are capable of some really bad things. Absolutely. We've inflicted pain on other people. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, we did that. We, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To, 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 but the to, kind of person I deserve is the person that, like, I deserve the person that only ever brings out the best in me. You're saying to yourself personally. That's what we oh, generally think. Yeah. I deserve the person that brings out the best in me. Right. Okay. Yeah, but you're a piece of shit sometimes. That's who right. you are. No matter what your surroundings are. The thing about people is, whenever they're behaving badly, they feel justified in that behavior. Absolutely. So now, like, it's almost like, um, it's like, you know, Chris Rock say, hey, you know, there's a reason to do everything, just don't do it. Right. There's a reason to kick an old person down the steps. Right. Just don't do it. Right, right. But the thing is, though, when, when if, if, if someone does something to you and your reaction to that is something that may be deemed like an overreaction, mm -hmm. yeah, but in your mind, you're justified. Nah, he, you know, they should have done X, Y, Z. I would have right. done right. this. But there is, but we sometimes we don't realize what the, the level of response should be. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then like appropriate is also a very fluid idea. Like what's an appropriate response? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like you you don't pop you don't pop shit to the three hundred pound, six foot four no. drunk dude in the club. No. Nah, unless you, know you feel like you get Because you, you're <laughs> dealing with like this is the reality of this person. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the scrawny you know what I mean? Five foot two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Guy with, you know what I mean? Like, you treat them differently. Yes. 
And when the 300 pound dude, so when the, when the, put it like this, when the, you, you have these two people in front of you. You got this scrawny, five foot two dude, and you got yeah. this 300 pound, six, seven, six foot seven yeah. dude, right? Yeah. <laughs> what it would take for the scrawny dude to inflict the same amount of damage as what it would take the 300 pound dude, like, it would take more from him to do that. Yes. Right? Like so, help. And help, right? <laughs> <laughs> But like if you if you end up in the hospital at the end of the night and you have a, a, a cr- fractured cranium yeah. and you know what I mean like your whatever your arm is your shoulder is out of socket whatever like whatever have it because the three hundred pound dude hit you twice mm-hmm. or because the scrawny dude hit you until his arms he couldn't lift his arms anymore right right like the damage is the same damage. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the scrawny dude, he took it too far because of how much effort it took him to do that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, 300 yeah, pounds, yeah. like he hit you twice. Yeah. Thank God he didn't hit you three times. <laughs> right, right, you should be appreciative. Right. You should be grateful <laughs> that that's as far as he went with it. You know what I mean? Does it, but the, well, the, the amount the of damage. With him on you. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was overreaction. Right, know? like, yeah, he, yeah, right? But the end result is it doesn't matter. You're still it in the hospital matter. with the same Same, yeah, same yeah, damage, yeah. same. Yeah. yeah, you, you know, um, one thing I want to talk, talk so about. So, what did you deserve? Did you, you know what I'm saying? So, the point is, the point of all that was, what did you deserve? If you deserved the, the same level of damage, then it doesn't matter how you got it. Yeah. You got what would, you did what would result in you fractured being, cranium and, you know what I mean? You know, I'm glad you said that because, you know, it's really interesting because um, um, people that want a certain thing, they don't really set their lives up to get that thing. Right. Like, okay, so so we talking about deserving. So I had two separate conversations with two different females. Mm-hmm. One female said to me, you know, she was dating some guy, and then she was like, you know, Steve, I had to get rid of this dude, a little weird. And I said to her, I said, well, what do you want? Mm-hmm. She goes, I want a guy that's not going to lie to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Had a similar conversation with another female. I didn't really know her, but, you know, it was the time we were all talking, and mm-hmm. she said the same thing. Mm-hmm. I want a guy that's not going to lie to me. Right. So my thing is, but what does that mean? <laughs> if you think every guy is a liar, how are you going to notice a guy who's not lying to you? Right. You know what I mean? Right. How, how are you going to do that? Maybe a couple of guys came in, in and out of your lives that weren't lying. Right. But you saw them as lies. Mm-hmm. So now you have to re- readjust the way you perceive the world. Yeah. And I realize a lot of people ask for things they don't even believe exist. Right. What's up? Right. <laughs> You know? Right. Dude, my, my main rule is if you can't trust, you can't be trusted. Right. That's it. Yeah, I can deal with that. If you can't trust, you can't be trusted. If you think, if I say, you know, I'm out here doing jumping jacks on the parkway, mm-hmm. that's what I'm doing. All right. Now, if you don't believe that's what I'm doing, well, what are you doing? Right. Like, how are you living your life mm-hmm. based on the fact that you can't believe I'm saying, I'm, I'm doing what I'm saying I'm doing? All right. Yeah. You know, everything. I just don't understand that. My thing is, you have to set your life up in a way that's going to get you the results that you want. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want roses, you got to make sure you you plant that's that roses. flower yeah. and you take care of that flower for it to grow healthy and strong. Yeah. You just can't be neglectful and let the shit wither in the corner. They be mad when it's all dried out and right. it look like it's from a you know Frankenstein movie. Yeah, I don't know what that is in us that that as human beings, why we why we want things that we don't believe actually exist. Fantasy. And I will, it's, it's fantasy, it's yeah. fairy tale, it's like fairy tale. The, the, the concept exists, the reality doesn't. Right. I mean? But once the concept is in your mind, you can have a desire for that. You can now want that, you know what I mean? Right. Do uh, you remember uh, DuckTales, remember the cartoon DuckTales? I never watched it. So the, 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 the old dude, um, he old. had a, a swimming pool of gold coins. Okay. And in the cartoon world, like he would swim in the pool of gold coins. Like that's how rich he was, right? Okay. His vault was he would dive into the vault and swim in it, right? <laughs> okay. You can't physically do that. Right. But once that idea is now in your head, right. You want to create some sort of <laughs> interpolation of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, once the idea is introduced to us, we want that thing. The problem is when we're talking about relationships and actually living life, we're talking about things that we actuate. 
So if you can't actuate it, yeah, you can't demand it. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know the thing about like the lying thing. Like I want to, I want a man that doesn't lie to me. Like those, you know. The, 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 the lying is not the problem. It's what's lied about that becomes a problem. You know what I'm saying? Okay, go deep. Go. So if you, you know, if if I'm okay with lying about, if I'm if I believe in the concept of white lies, it's just a you know it's a minor thing. You know what I'm saying? You ask me where I am. I'm supposed to come pick you up. I call you and say, yo, come downstairs. I'm I'm up the street. When I'm really ten minutes away. Because I know it always takes you 10 minutes no matter when I call you. Oh, right, I'm okay right. with the lie that I introduced. Like, I lied. And I'm okay with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you feel just I'm not okay with you saying you're ready when you won't be ready for 10 minutes. <laughs> so lying is not the problem. Because, you, like you said, you can justify your lie. But the problem is, like, what gets lied about? You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you know, I have a problem with I, personally me. I try to stay away from lies. Period. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I do. I don't look at it as a lie when I do that, <laughs> right? right. But, but, but that's a perception. Well, right? the other person is like, "Yo, Steve didn't tell the truth." <laughs> right, right, right. right. Um, lies have no boundaries. Right. Lies need another lie to support it. Right. So if if a lie starts. And then a lie is questioned. More lies have to go in to support that lie. Mm-hmm. I don't even get into all that because I, I don't have the brain power to remember all the lies to support the lies. So I just go with the truth. Right. You know what I mean? And the thing is, you have to set your life up in a way that it's all in the setup. Mm-hmm. If you allow, if you allow the winds to blow you around, mm-hmm. you can never have a control of where you end up. Right. But if you have a sail to steer you, you can have a, a pretty Good grass, yeah, where you're gonna land in court. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, people who think, like, I can't deal with the lie stuff, mm-hmm. you know? So, when a woman says, you know, I want a guy, I want a guy that, you know, doesn't lie, and I'm like, well, I don't lie, mm-hmm. the first thing you're gonna be like, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Well, if you don't believe that, you're not gonna find what you're seeking. Then the, 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 the guy doesn't exist. The guy doesn't exist. Right. Right? Because you believe every guy lies. You believe, mm-hmm. right. So why are you asking for that? Right. So now, this is about what this podcast is about. You need to have a conversation with yourself yeah. as to why do I believe every guy is Every guy's a lie. Because here's the thing. All form of lifestyles exist in right. the world. Right. Right? Like, like, all for, like, like it, it, would, it would be amazing to me when, when people would say to me when we were younger, like, well, you're always going to be in debt. So I might as well get what I want. I'm like, but that's not true. Right. You're always going to have expenses. Right. Expenses and debt is two different, two different things. things. Like your phone bill is an expense. Mm-hmm. You know, that credit card bill is a debt. Mm-hmm. So if you cut off your phone, you don't have no more, no more phone bills. Right. Right? Yeah. right? So that's gone. Like, listen, if you burn all that stuff you bought on that credit card, it doesn't matter. You owe that money. Right. So people confuse debt and expenses. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just the way we're wired and the way we're taught. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think this generation, there's a lot of potential, there's a lot of possibilities that. Mm-hmm. Previous generations didn't have, yeah. but there's there there is there's an improper execution. Mm-hmm. The execution of how these things should be done is not really there. What know? things? What are you talking about? Just the way we look at just life itself. Just um, there's there's not cleanliness in the way we execute. Everything's kind of messy. Just the way we look at it. yeah, Who but that's I gonna know? be in perpetuity. No generation is prepared for their generation. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter how great the generation of the 50s did it. They didn't live in 2018. They didn't live with the social constructs of 2018. Yeah. They didn't live with the, you know what I mean? True. So nobody's prepared for the generation that they're in. That's true. We only just, you know what I'm saying? That's why we always, like, we, we spend so much time referencing the past, no matter how much it's irrelevant, because that's what we know. Like, I don't know 10 seconds from now. Right. This place could burn into, like, burst into flame. Yeah. I don't know what's, you know what I mean? I'm not prepared for, in 10 seconds, the building is going to burn. No. I'm prepared for what happened up until this moment. Right. That's all I'm prepared for. If I'm even complete, if I could really right. say I'm prepared, you know what I'm saying? And in this moment. That's all I'm equipped with. And this moment reflects the next moment that you're living in, like, because you think this reality will continue. I believe this is it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Back. Wait, hang on a second. Go ahead, brother. Because uh, the, the, the idea of like, I don't want somebody that's going to lie to me. I just want somebody who's not going to lie to me. I mean, number one, that's like, that's such a very singular, simple criteria. Okay. But I think what that speaks to more, I think what that speaks to is like how singular and, yeah, and simple the criteria, I, I, I said the same thing twice. It's, it's, a, it's, it's unfortunate if you ask anybody, you know, what do you want? If you ask a woman or you ask a man, you know, what do you want out of a woman? What do you want out of a man? And the response is, I just want somebody who's not going to lie to me. Which means that you've had so much experience being lied to that you don't realize how much more there is to require or, or even right. <laughs> request right. of another of a person that you're in a relationship yeah, with. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Than just being lied to. Then just not you just don't lie to me. Like, do you want somebody that's gonna challenge you? Do you want somebody that's gonna build you up? Do you want somebody that's gonna invest in you? Do you want somebody that's gonna allow, allow you to be completely who you are? Like what do you want out of a person if you're gonna if you're gonna be joined at the hip with somebody for whatever period of time, whether it's the rest of your life or five years or whatever? Like, what else do you want out of that person? You know what I mean? It's like people who I think about like food. Like if you if you don't understand the complexities of the palate right. and, and you know I mean of of your taste buds and whatnot, you don't you don't understand why things work a certain way. Like chefs understand why things work the way they work and how to balance, you know, acidity with sweetness and or, or whatever the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. thing is. Like they understand how to balance these things. So when they prepare a dish, whether it's a full meal or just one dish, they understand why you need to what what works well. Yeah. You don't need to do anything. Yeah. Anything. But they understand if you add sugar to this thing, you know, it'll work it'll work well with it. Yes. And then if you add a certain kind of sweetness, like all sweetness ain't the same sweetness. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you if you if you want to add apples to it, mm -hmm. or do you want to add straight sugar to it? Yeah. Do you want to add honey to it? Do you yeah. want to add like what do you want to add to it to sweeten it? In what way? You know what I'm saying? If all you say is I, I want somebody that's not gonna lie to me, then it's like it's like you have all you've ever had was salty food. <laughs> and all you could say is I just want something that's not salty. Do you want right, 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 right? Candy? Do you want <laughs> dessert? Right, do right. you want like what kind of other than do you want? But okay, I love what you just said. I love that example. I believe most of us do not think about what we want. We allow society to justify what we should have. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like being successful is buying the seven entrance colonial, mm -hmm. you know, in Montclair. Right. You know what I mean? And then you get there, you're like, damn, dog. That's not really making me happy. Yeah. You know, I got to yeah. fix the roof. I got... That, the whole thing is we don't spend enough time with our own thoughts, mm -hmm. with our own selves. Mm -hmm. We don't... And really find out what is it that we want. Mm -hmm. We expect outside help to complete us or yeah. take us to the next level when actually no like we're the ones it starts mm -hmm. here with us you know like when someone goes to a therapist the therapist doesn't give you the answers the therapist give helps you, you give you time uncover though. yeah where yep. the answer because the answers are in you right you know so you know we talk about that deserving thing i thought it was always i'm a big com comedy fan i thought it was really interesting back in the day when jermaine dupree was dating Chan jackson mm -hmm. and then i think they're dating again now are they? I believe they. Well, I, I heard something, whether it's true or not. Look at that. But I remember when Chris Rock was going on in his skit about that whole thing. Yeah. And his punchline was, I had a chance. Yeah. Right? And the funny thing is, on the surface, you may think he does. Mm -hmm. But under the surface, right. maybe he doesn't. Maybe he still don't have a chance. And he still doesn't have a right. chance. Because the thing is, we are so surface oriented mm -hmm. that we don't understand there's a lot going on beneath the surface in any given point right. in a relationship. Right. You don't know what Jermaine brings to her or right. presents. Right. Like, yo, I remember um, I'm in my office one day and um, one of my good friends is over. Mm -hmm. She's going to help me out with something. She's talking to my wife. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, I'm five. Six mm -hmm. on a good day, okay. five, five and a half on most days, okay. right? 
And then my 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 homegirl said, you know, like I I like short guys, and I'm in love with goes, That's right, baby. Woohoo! Then my wife goes, Yeah, I like tall guys. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, right, right. Whoa. Right. <laughs> like, what? Right. <laughs> what? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, though, the thing is, oftentimes, if you are, if you're given, if someone gave you a sketch artist mm-hmm. and says, what does your ideal woman or man looks like? And you sketch it out. Mm-hmm. Nine and a half, 9.99 out of 10, mm-hmm. that person does not look like the person Who you're with. with. Right. <laughs> All right? Right. You know? It's really interesting. Yeah. Even, even when um, they, I was watching this thing, and this is all about now, we're going into deserving. Deserving has a lot to do with how you see yourself, mm-hmm. right? I was watching this thing on TV one time, and they were doing this ex- experiment on you, like a person. Mm-hmm. So they had a sketch artist have you have, tell the sketch artist what you think you look like. Okay. And they sketch that. Mm-hmm. And they would sketch, like, me. Mm-hmm. How do you see my boy? Mm-hmm. Starsky. Starsky. Yeah, yeah. You know? And often, more than often... The, when the person describes themselves, they're always like hideous and disfigured and less attractive mm. than what they really look like. Wow. But when someone else was describing them, they look more like themselves and like, you know, but but it's right. this, it was a really interesting <laughs> um, experiment yeah. that we, we see ourselves That's interesting. often differently than how others see us. <laughs> you know, sometimes in a less complimentary light. And you know what happens in that, in that instance? We don't shoot our shot for Janet. Yeah. And, no offense, is the shot worth shooting? Right. Like, that's... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all we know is what's presented. Right. You know what I mean? You, you don't... You, it's oh, the picture of. Yeah, it's not... It's not. And we, get, we fall in love. Like, like yo, man, my, my mom used to always tell me, she said, Steve, don't hang your basket higher than you can reach it, mm-hmm. and don't watch other people for what they have, because you don't know how they got it. Right. You know what your resources are. Mm-hmm. Like I'm the kind of person I'm grateful and happy for anybody who's doing their thing. Mm-hmm. But I know what my I know what my right. my chess box could do. Right. I'm not upset because someone has more than me. Right. I'm not feeling sorry because someone has less than right. me. Do do you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Like I know what I'm I can do with mine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's it. I think we, we, we often watch other people too much and envy what they have when what they have and what they present is not often the hundred percent truth. Right. Or or what they have at what expense. Like we wouldn't at what expense? Pay that expense. You know what I mean? Like like how much you pay for that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh man, hell no. Yeah. I mean not to knock Janet in any way, but like oh, you know, no, 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 nobody This is an example. None of none of the people who fantasize about Whoever the person is, don't know them. Know what it's like to be with that person. Absolutely not. Like have have zero clue whatsoever. You, you know, know, yo, it's really interesting. Do you believe in the term love at first sight? No, I don't either. No, I believe you can have. I believe you have your certain type of people. Mm-hmm. Like there's a person you meet, and you vibe with them. Mm-hmm. You're like, yo, damn. It's like I knew this person like all my life. Yeah. But now for you to do love at first sight. You're taking this small sliver of this presentation that they gave you and you're filling in the rest yeah, yeah. with what you want them yeah, to yeah. be. Now, you may hit the points on certain aspects of their relationship, but you're going to miss most of them because mm-hmm. you don't know the person. Right. You think, oh my gosh, she's clean looking, so she is this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, I think it's a, I think it's a, I think anything is possible. I think the yeah, vast right. majority of us won't experience the vast majority of possibilities. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's like, um, you know, people talk about like, in order to, to, to reach success, like you have to experience the, the, the droughts and the, and the pain and the, the having not and, and the struggle and all that and the grind. Not everybody experiences that. No. You know what I'm saying? Like there are some people, like I, I remember uh, Jerry Seinfeld talked about how like, it was never hard for him. Oh, he really? never struggled as a comedian. Really? He, yeah. It, like, from the time he started to today, like, it was never, like, a, a grind to get on or a grind to, to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't, his experience wasn't 
Kevin Hart's experience wasn't right, right. Sleeping in the cars and oh like, yeah, yeah, Steve yeah, Harvey, and like all that. You're like <laughs> yeah. everybody don't have to. You do so so to believe that you have to have that experience in order to get the reward is flawed. Yes, but I believe that. So I believe yes. in in ter- like on the question of love at first sight. I believe that maybe there are some people out here who are, who've experienced it genuinely, authentically. I'm, I can't, I couldn't say that it doesn't exist. I believe that. 99.999% of us won't experience that, but to those that do, all the best. You know what? I love what you're saying because I think oftentimes every path, what you're saying is every path is not the same. Right. Everyone's path to a certain destination is not the same. Right. It's just like, you know, I hate when somebody says, yo, marriage is hard. Mm-hmm. It's not hard. It's not hard. We make it hard. Right. Like, like well, you're going to argue. No, you're going to disagree. You don't, to you don't have to argue. Right. Like, I don't need to be slamming doors and kicking stuff over because you don't see my way. And I think, and I think in our, in, in, in when we develop relationships of any kind, expectations has, has got to be managed. Mm-hmm. You know? And I really find that people who expect more deliver less. Yeah. Because there's a perception that I'm expecting more because I am more. Right, right. But you're really not. Right. From my experience, of people who expect more and complain the most or most of the time the problems. Mm-hmm. Because they say, well, I'm here. You need to get here. Right. Like, I- I'm here already. Yeah, so here when you for who, feel- though? Right. Here for yourself. Right. But when you feel you're here already, right. you do nothing else. Right. No, no, you need to come yeah. this way. Yeah. You know? And, 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 and we're so misled. And then when it goes awry, there's this confusion that's like, I don't understand. Like, mm-hmm. I, yo, man, many times, you know, like, you, you see someone just go through the whole cycle, mm-hmm. you know, over and over again. Oh, why do I keep meeting this kind of guy? Mm-hmm. Why can't, you know, because deep down, that's the kind of guy you think you, you deserve. Yeah. That, or female. Yeah. You know, you know I'm, I'm, I was in, uh, I remember one time in college. That's crazy. Yeah, I remember one time in college. It was this really cute girl. Mm-hmm. This guy was feeling her. Mm-hmm. He was he was a tall, he was a good looking dude, but he was a little his personality was not he wasn't a like cool personality. He was he was a little off, right? Okay. So and I, I'm a kind of, I talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. I got you know, I, I like to talk to people. I'm you know. So oh. I said to um so I said to him one day, you know, because you know, like I, I don't like when anyone is made fun of or right. made to be a fool. Like I, yep. even if I like him or don't like him, I just don't like yeah. him, right? So I, I pulled him to the side when I see him, dude. That chick is not feeling you. Mm-hmm. You need to give that up. Mm-hmm. And he looks at me with the straightest face. And he says, persistence overcomes resistance. <laughs> and I was like, right, dude. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm interested in a female and she wants me to kill elephants for her, mm-hmm. it will never happen. Right. I don't believe in that. Yeah. I don't believe in fighting for love. Love is a gift. You don't mm-hmm. fight for shit. I don't believe in that. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I, like, like, if I care about you, I care about you. Mm-hmm. I'm not caring about you and sitting back going, okay, let me see how much he cares for me. If he wants it, it's now it's tainted. Yeah, like, what is really, what really is, what, what do people that's mean? That's not love. That's insecurity. Love. Like, I don't. You know, we have all these things that we say and we live life under that we never analyze. Like, right. Why are we doing it this right. way? Like I'm like, dude, what I'm like, well you well you always gonna argue. No, every couple does not argue. No. Even if a hundred couples are married mm-hmm. and 70 of them argue, right. 30 of them don't argue. Right, right. What like, all right, let me get on that 30 point. Yeah. That's what I want. I yeah, I mean it's like, you know, it's interesting, like, you know, being in relationships, having been in relationships, like, you really hopefully you you learn to appreciate like where you are that you weren't in your previous relationships, like as a person. Yes. Hopefully you get to appreciate like I was not this person in my previous relationship. Yes. The one that didn't work out, the one that failed, the one right. that I mean crashed and burned. Yes. Right. Um and you also get to appreciate the person that you're in the relationship with and what working on this relationship like the evidence of the work on the relationship. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, your self evidence, the self that what you like, see what you yourself. can, yeah, what you yeah. in yourself and like in the relationship itself. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, like we talk about what's the name a lot. You know, House of Cards. Yeah, they spend a lot of time having conversations with each other about how they feel about a thing. 
Yes. Right? But sometimes yes. the person you're in the relationship with is not the person you want to have those conversations with because you're not comfortable with where they are. So you don't want to hear where they are. Well, you fear what they're going to say. Yeah, or oh, you oh, know. Yeah. You already know. You know what I mean? Like, I want to say the house of cards. We, yeah, we talked about this. House of cards. You know, they're going through their thing right now, but whatever. What I realized in House of Cards, and we talked about this, that in their relationship, all the lies are outside of their relationships. Mm -hmm. But they're they're very clear with each other. Yeah. Where in real life, it seems like all the lies are inside the relationship. Right. Because I know more about people's relationship than the people in it know yeah. about them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that's fascinating to me. But I think that, that that has to do with, like, you know, people are, like we talked about, I remember one time we were having a conversation, we were talking about how, like, Whenever you have a conversation with somebody, more than one conversation is happening. Yeah. It's like three conversations happening. Yes. Like in this conversation, we're having this conversation, yes. but I'm also having internal dialogue. Yeah. And I'm also processing like what I know of you. So when you say a thing, it's I'm hearing it through the lens of what I know of you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like yeah. I'm hearing you two ways. Yeah. I'm also hearing what's going on in here. Yes. So I'm, saying, I'm having three conversations. You're having three conversations. There's six conversations going on right now. Right, right, you know right. In relationships, more than one relationship is being had. You're ha yeah. like you're having the relationship with this person through the lens you see them through. Yes. You're also having the relationship with your ex or your parents or your boss. Like all relationship dynamics are being filtered through this person. You know what I'm saying? So when you're in a relationship with somebody and they that's why I really hate the idea of like triggers like I think that's to a term triggers when people say well that's my trigger yeah I think that's that's the bullshit right but the point is you do something that like if I'm in a relationship with somebody and they do something that my ex did I'm marrying them up they are now the same person yes you know what I'm saying yeah 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 if I bring you flowers, right? Mm -hmm. If I bring my girl flowers and I bring her, one day I bring her daffodils, right? <laughs> and her ex would always bring her flowers when he fucked up. Flowers now mean I fucked up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like the lens is like we always like we're having more than one relationship and we have to factor that in because the other person is paying the price for that. Yeah. And then you're like, you're putting things on that person. They're experiencing you doing this to them, whether you're conscious or subconscious or unconscious. But now they're going to respond with something, whether that is conscious, subconscious or unconscious. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. I bring you flowers, you curse me out. Yeah, what's up with that? You won't see flowers again. Absolutely not. I'm going to be now the guy who doesn't bring flowers. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Am yeah. I a piece of shit for not bringing flowers now? Well, to her, you probably are. Right. That's a perception thing. That's the multiple conversation that we're having. Because the thing is, like, you know, it's really interesting you said that because I was talking to one of my homegirls, love this girl to death, and, and um, good looking girl, mm -hmm. and she's always having, like, it's almost like she's always testing guys. Mm -hmm. I said, you gotta cut that out. Mm -hmm. You gotta cut that out. Yeah. I said, she, well, what do you mean? I said, listen, if you had a, if you had a, um, if you had a, so you had a boyfriend that cheated on you. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was, he got injured with his hip. He mm -hmm. got a bad hip because he had to jump out the second floor window mm -hmm. of the chick mm -hmm. that he was cheating with because her husband come, right. whatever. He jumped out the window, broke his hip, now he got a limp. Mm -hmm. Every guy you meet with a limp, right. you think he jumped out right. the first floor, right. the second floor window, get right. ready for some chicks. That's husband. how guys get limps. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right, right. So now you're like, yo, what's up with the limp? Right. And the guy's like, oh, you know, I was born with this this thing. Right. And like, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, he ain't born with no right, damn right, right, right. Limb. Where's the medical records? Right. Where's the x-rays? The thing is, like I said, I'll bring it back to it. You can't trust if you can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. Right? If you don't trust someone, you don't need to be there. Right. Why are you there? Right. Are you trying to deliver this person? Right. <laughs> are you trying to make a non-liar out of someone who you mm -hmm. perceive as a liar? Mm -hmm. If there's no trust, why are you there? Right. Right. That that is the main question. Mm -hmm. You you literally sleep next to this person every night. <laughs> yeah. 
They can easily get up and go to the kitchen. <laughs> and just like, ah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But you don't trust this person? Right. Man, please. Yeah. All right, man. I think that's enough for today. I think so. I'm tired. I really enjoyed I'm the arched. conversation, man. You always. <laughs> <laughs> always. What always, are we going to talk about next time? I don't know. We'll figure something out. All right. We got to figure out how this one went. But listen, this podcast is definitely about getting audience um, involvement. If anything you said, you you saw that we said that interested you, sparked something, or um, you know motivated you to want to be a part of the conversation, please send your comments to us, and you can also like, subscribe, and share, and share. Um, Till next time. Yeah. I'm Peace. Steve. I'm Starsky. We're out. If I could take you up in boom, 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 bo